Good morning. It is Tuesday, June 30th. Today in the first reading, the prophet Amos is sent by God to the Israelites, and they're not listening. They are doing their own thing, and it is an offense to God, and God is letting them know that um, this is not good, that if you keep doing this, something bad will really happen, and I will abandon you. Parents know what that's like. Parents are the ones that I always talk about when I mention prophecy. A prophet does not predict the future like some kind of an astrologer. A prophet lets you know that if you keep doing what you're doing, no good will come of it. And parents are very attuned to that. You're always telling your kids, if you keep doing that, you know what's going to happen to you. If you don't stop doing that, do you know what's going to happen? And so the prophets of the ancient world, whether it was Isaiah, Jeremiah, Amos, Hosea, <clears throat> there were so many of them, that was their responsibility to let other people know, uh, the Israelites, that God is watching and God is displeased or pleased as the case may be. And uh, if you keep going, this or that will most likely happen. And all of us play that role, not only with children, but for each other in life. We very often have to speak up to family and friends and let them know that if this keeps going like this, then this, that, or the other thing uh, is going to happen. We don't, we, we don't know. It depends on the situation, um, but especially if it's going to be uh, a bad thing, which frequently uh, it is. Take the case of uh, interventions. You know, when all of a sudden the whole family sits down with someone who we know is involved with drugs or is drinking too much or whatever, the whole family sits down with the person, does the intervention, more or less saying to someone they love very much, you can't do this anymore. If you keep doing this, your life will be at risk. Your relationships may fail and you or yourself may come to an unfortunate end. So. The whole notion of prophecy is not unknown to us. And again, it's not being an astrologer and saying, oh, I see the future. We see the future, but you're really looking at the present. A prophet really is all about today and what you're doing today. Stop it. Change it. Modify it. That's what a prophet is all about. And in our daily lives, often we have to play prophet to ourselves. We know what we should be doing. We know we should be procrastinating. We know we should be loving a little better. We know we should be more embracing of those next to us. We know that we should be more patient and more forgiving. The very best prophets are the prophets within us playing prophet to ourselves, knowing that as a disciple and a follower of Christ, we can indeed do better than we are doing. Look within yourself today, my friends, and see what is in there. Are we where we are supposed to be? Are you where you're supposed to be? I know I do it every day for myself. Please take the time to do that, to be the best person you can be. You are a true child of God. In the eyes of God, you are the very finest creation there is. But it's up to us to live up to our calling, the calling that God places within each one of us. In the words of the Catechism, to know, love, and serve him in this world. Matthew's Gospel today speaks of the following wisdom. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins? He then said to the paralytic, rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowds saw this, they were struck with awe, glorified God, who had given such authority to men. Wonderful gospel. And Jesus, once again, 
does what he does because he sees faith. He sees the faith of everyone there and forgives the sins, but there are those around who doubt him, who are angry at him, and who aren't, who aren't really seeing the tremendous message of God's love, <coughs> which is being channeled through Jesus Christ. And Jesus knows that. And so what does he say? That you may know, that you may know that the Son of Man has such power, he tells the paralytic, rise and walk. And that follows in all of the other healing stories, because he often will say to the others, your faith has saved you. Jesus didn't want to be seen as a magician or a charlatan. He wanted to be seen for who he was. And so he tells the man, rise up and walk. He already knew that the faith was, was present, and that was always a prerequisite to healing. But in this case, he really wanted to make a powerful demonstration of what faith can do. Faith has the power to draw us back to God for forgiveness, but also the power to solve situations which can overwhelm us. The healing power of God that is available to us, which was given to that poor man so that he could rise and walk. Very often, the same thing is being said to us. Maybe not about rising from a state of paralysis, but rise up from your sins. Rise from your disbelief. Rise up from your, your doubt and your hurt and your pain and walk. Walk in the light of Christ. Walk as a true child of God. Take care, my friends. You are children of God. Walk well with the Lord. And now, my friends, as we have shared the Word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. Let us pray together in the words he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of us, my friends, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And finally, may the peace and love of Christ be with you and be in your heart. And if you're with people you love, and even with some friends, strangers perhaps, Share a sign of peace with those near you and those that you love. Of course, be safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.